one of my student asked a very nice thing. He asked me, neural network used to look like this, but how it suddenly started looking like this and that too with a loop. That's a very, very valid thing to ask. So when we start learning R and N, then we have to understand how neural network converted from this large thing to this small thing with a loop. Welcome to Unfold Data Science. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. In this video, I am going to unfold recurrent neural network with you. Please watch this video till end if you want to get an understanding of RNN which you never want to forget. Let's dive deep into RNN architecture. Here are the topics we are going to cover as part of this video. So first of all, we will see why are we learning RNN or what was the need of RNN, okay? Then we are going to see how neural networks changed from the uh, picture point of view, from the diagram point of view, the larger network to the smaller network, right? Then we are going to understand what makes RNN recurrent, which is very important to understand to get into the details of architecture. And then we are going to see in Python, when we train an RNN, then what are the things that gets trained and how it relates to the architecture. And finally, we are going to club everything together and see the complete architecture of RNN. So this video is an advanced video in the world of NLP. So you need little background to understand these. What is that little background? You must know how a basic neural network or an simple uh, artificial neural network works. So you should be familiar with the concepts of what is the meaning of bias? What is the meaning of weights? Okay. And because I'll be using these terms in the explanation. And what is the meaning of training of a neural network? What is the meaning of forward propagation? What is the meaning of a backward propagation? If you have confusion on these um, basic topics of neural network, I will advise you to pause this video and go to Unfold Data Science playlist on artificial neural network. So you have to go to YouTube and search for Unfold Data Science ANN playlist and you will find the videos on right from scratch components of neural network to maths behind neural network to gradient descent to epochs to weight in initialization, everything you will get here, okay? But if you are comfortable with those concepts, then let's move ahead. No need to watch that right now. So first of all, guys, why RNN was needed, right? As I was telling you in last video as well, I am writing a sentence here, right? For example, I'm same sentence I will write here. So I was born, I was born in Germany, Germany. Hence, I can speak. And at the moment I say, hence I can speak and fill in the blanks if I give you, right? you will very easily say that, you know, here it should be German, okay? You should fill this blank with German. How are you able to say that? Because you are able to relate from the previous information, okay? So if I give you just one information, for example, if I give you just speak word, maybe you will not be able to fill this. But since I'm giving you everything right from starting to end, you are able to derive that meaning and you are able to fill this. That is how human mind works. But unfortunately, computers do not work like this until or unless a specific, uh, you know, a specialized network is built in such a way. So that is where RNN comes into picture. So what RNN does is, if anybody asks you how RNN is different from uh, basic neural networks, so there is only one word that differentiates RNN from the normal neural network, and that is memory okay this is the one word that differentiates rnn from normal artificial neural network memory means rnn has a capability of memorizing things memorizing things means what memorizing things means if i am at this word okay so for example i will write here for simplicity i will write here word one word two word three and you can go up to here let's say word n Okay, so when I am at word n plus one, then I remember, I remember what happened at word two and what happened at word three and what happened at word four. 
that that is the only thing that makes rnn different from normal basic artificial neural network okay and as i give you this example if you do not remember the context then you may not be able to derive this word with a meaningful derivation so that is where rnn was very very useful because uh, as the as we go on to um, analyzing the complex natural languages the context becomes really really important okay and in the world of rnn what is the meaning of recurrent so we will try to understand this but first let me give you a little background of so that you don't confuse let's say i have in my in my corpus i have two documents okay my document one is i'll give you a simple example here my document one is sky is blue okay and my document two is let's say sky is black okay so how many words we are having how many sentences or documents we are having two how many words we are having here just let's count the number of words first word unique words i am counting okay second word third word and fourth word so in my corpus just four unique words and how many documents two different documents okay now there is one very important concept that we have to understand when it comes to rnn and the concept is known as time stamp time stamp okay so one basic thing that will happen in rnn is you don't send all these three words for example if i talk about the first record or first document so everybody please pay attention here the training will happen one document at a time or one row at a time right so every time you talk of machine learning training you talk of how this row will be trained right suppose this is a sentiment classification huge case right so this is your let's say for example target variable this is let's say one and this is let's say zero so how the training will happen this entire thing will be treated as one record right so when this first record goes in the network try to understand this very carefully guys because this is base of rnn okay when the first record goes into the network all these three words will not go together okay so first sky will go first sky will go let's call this time t minus 1 okay then is will go let's call this time t and then blue will go let's call this time t plus 1 so as you can see here in the same network in the same input in the same uh, you can say training of one single record training we are sending three words at three different time intervals okay three different times and this concept in the world of rnn is called time stamp so at time stamp t minus 1 what is the input to the network sky at time t what is the input is at time t plus 1 what is the input blue why this is important is every time we say that rnn remembers so what is the one word that differentiates rnn from other networks rnn has a memory okay so when we say memory that means that at time t plus 2 two things has already happened what are those two things one is sky and one is is so rnn will remember what happened at time t and what happened at time t minus 1 that is what is called as the concept of time stamp in rnn so i will come back to this understand time stamp means when you send one word that is your one time stamp and when you send the next word that becomes time stamp t plus 1 okay just keep that in mind we will come back to this important concept and now i will make it very very clear to you how the pictorial representation of rnn changed neural network changed when it came to rnn so this is how typically a neural network looks okay so suppose i'll have four inputs two hidden and one output nodes okay and i will just connect everything to everything i will just connect everything to everything because this is a fully connected neural network so let me connect it this is your neural network okay okay so suppose this is a normal 
um, artificial neural network, not RNN. So what will happen? You just give your inputs from here, okay? And you take your outputs from here. This is your normal, simple artificial neural network, right? Now, just you have to remember two things, guys. What if, what if I, step one, I will do a two-step process here. Step one is rotate, rotate anti-clockwise. Above picture, you rotate anti-clockwise. You can imagine if you rotate it anti-clockwise, then how it will rotate, not clockwise, anti-clockwise like this. So if you rotate it anti-clockwise, then how your network will look? Let me roughly draw it here. One, two, three, four, one, two, and this is your output, okay? So let me make it like this so that you will be very clear on how the architecture of the RNN is looking like this, okay? So what, what I did now, I rotated anti-clockwise, okay? And then the second step you have to do is you have to shrink. The second step you have to do is shrink, S-H-R-I-N-K. Now at the moment I shrink this, I squeeze this, right? So what you will see is this all thing I will squeeze and I will call this as input, okay? This I will squeeze and I will put this, in, put this inside a box and this I will call that as an output. And how I will represent this is like this. This is my input, okay? This is my hidden layer, okay? And this is my output. Very simple to understand, nothing fancy here. So input, this is your output, and this is your hidden layer, okay? So every time you see this picture, and if you are confused that how neural network became like this, remember this is the same neural network. We have just rotated anti-clockwise and we have squeezed it, okay? Till now, this is not even RNN. This is simple, normal neural network, okay? So you have just rotated and squeezed it. Fine up to here. Now, if you remember guys, I am telling you that RNN remembers the information of the previous state. So how that happens, let me explain you with a simple example, okay? So I will take the same neural network here. For example, this, 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 and this, and two nodes, okay? And I will just connect it again fully. If I don't draw this again and again, then it will not be easy for you to understand. Hence, I'm drawing it again and again, okay? So I'm building the same network, four input, two hidden, one output, fine? Suppose, suppose, what is my first sentence? My first sentence is sky, sky is blue right in my last video i told you before training the model we will convert it to some kind of encoding right so suppose my vocab size is four and sky is my first word so one hot encoded vector of sky will be what one zero 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 right one hot encoded vector of is will be what zero one zero zero now somebody who is not understanding this please watch the last video on when I said NLP up to RNN, okay? So sky is being represented by this vector. One is being, re is, is being represented by this vector and blue is being represented by zero, zero, one, zero, okay? So my sentence sky is blue is now represented like this. Fine up to here. As I told you in RNN, input will go one by one, okay? So which word will go first? Now, suppose the first word that I send here is sky. So what will go as the input, guys? One, zero, zero, zero. This goes as the input, right? And then there will be weights. There will be weights, right? So how many weights will be here? How many weights will be here? You can comment me down. How many weights will be here? I'm not writing. How many weights will be here from input to hidden? And suppose these weights goes here and then activation function works here okay, on weights and biases, and then some output comes, fine. Whatever the output comes, right, that output will go here, okay, and the same output will come back to the node as well, and same output will go to the other node as well, 
hidden node. Similarly, whatever output comes from this hidden node, okay, this output comes back to this hidden node and this output goes back to another hidden node as well. Okay, I know this diagram is becoming complex and that is the reason I will explain you in two levels how this is happening. Okay, so let me omit this first. Let me omit this first. So if you have understood up to here, then it's a cakewalk to understand how RNN works. Let's write our three words here. So first word is sky, second word is is, and third word is blue, okay? So as I told you, all these world will go into the network one by one. So let's draw our network here. So this will be my network, the squeezed form of the network, not the expanded form, okay? Then again, same network, but a copy of the network when is word comes, same network, but at a different time state, okay? And same network, but at a increased timestamp or time state, okay? So for example, this can be my T, this can be my T minus one, and this can be my T plus one. So same network at three different time steps or time stamps, okay? So here, when the sky word goes into the network, it will go with some weight, right? And then activation function will work on this weight multiplied by sky's vector plus some bias and you get some output, right? The only difference between normal neural network and RNN is RNN will pass this output, let's call this O1, to the next state. Next state means when the next word enters into the network. So O1 will come. And again, the vector of is will come and the weight will come as usual, right? So this is one input, the W weight multiplied by is vector and other input at this step. This is very important to understand. At this hidden layer, the function will become output one multiplied by this output will also come with some weight, okay? So let's call that weight one. So output one multiplied by weight one plus this is vector, so I will say vector of is multiplied by W plus bias, okay? This F is nothing but your activation function. And let's say this output is O2, so next time at next timestamp, what will happen in the network? Again, this blue word vector will get multiplied with W, that is weights, that will come in place of this, and this O2 will get multiplied with weights, and bias will come and then it will move forward. So what's happening here? At every timestamp, we are inputting one word with its weight and we are also considering previous output with some weight, okay? All these things pass through the activation function and then we get our prediction, just like normal neural network prediction. So it's very, very simple to understand, guys. Thus, two, three concepts you need to remember. How we are representing the network in a shrinking way, how we are passing previous input to the next state, and how words are going in different timestamps or different time states, okay? So I hope you understood the RNN architecture, guys. In part two of this video, I'm going to show you what are the different flavors of RNN, like one to one, one to many. These kind of flavors are there in RNN. I'm going to cover in the next part and also the Python implementation, okay? Please drop me a comment. How did you like this video? See you all in the next video, wherever you are. Stay safe and take care.